Hi, I'm Taylor and I'm a sophomore at Appalachian State University and I am majoring in exercise science. Today I will be interviewing Dr. Brianne McGee. Dr. McGee is an optometrist at Bon Roten in Chasson Eye Clinics in Southern Louisiana. Brianne is also a member of ACSO. I'm sorry, ASCO. Mm-hmm. ASCO stands for Association of Schools and Colleges of Optometry. ASCO is committed to achieving excellence in optometric, optometric, mm-hmm. optometric education mm-hmm. and to helping its member institutions prepare for well-qualified graduates for entrance into the profession of optometry. Hi, Dr. McGee. Hi. So I'm just going to ask you a couple questions. Okay. Could you describe what your typical work day entails and what your first few years in this career were like? Well, I am uh, a 2016 grad of Pacific University, so I've been out of school for two years. My first year out of school, um, I completed residency at uh, Bond Road and Eye Care Clinic, and I'm still on as a full-time optometrist. Uh, but typically, um, a work day may consist of um, me seeing about 30 to 40 patients, uh, and that can range from general eye exams, contact lens uh, checks and fittings, progress evaluations, uh, special testing, so visual fields, um, uh, OCTs, those types of things, uh, and also seeing emergencies kind of slipped in there, you know. Uh, but usually in a group practice setting, it's a, I think the pace is a little bit faster. Uh, so we have technicians who work our patients up and we just go in there and kind of put the final touches on everything. So, right. um, but first few years, um, definitely what I expected it to be, you know, just going in there, um, in full force and just going into a doting, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What high school courses or college courses have you found to be the most applicable or important to this occupation or what do you wish you could have taken? Well, um, I remember being in school, I used to question why we needed such a strong science background. So like general biology, chemistry, and physics mostly, and I hated physics in school. But now as an optometrist, <laughs> yeah, now I can see, now, I guess since I've been through optometry school, been through residency, and now practicing as a doctor, where it all makes sense. So it's kind of like full circle for me now. Um, General biology, uh, especially when you're learning things about like the crab cycle or glucose, and we encounter patients who have conditions like diabetes, and we have to educate patients on those types of things, you know? Uh, And it's not so much learning um, things. I think when we're in college or high school, or even optometry school, we learn things in isolation, uh, in individual like courses, but Mm -hmm. it's up to us at the end to kind of find that whole picture and uh, mm-hmm. each of the classes that we we went through um, like I say biology chemistry when we're prescribing medicines you want to make sure things are interacting with um, another drug you want to make sure patients are able to digest that drug um, not creating any problems and physics because one we do a lot of um, uh, with glasses and contact lenses so we have to know how optics works uh, how light comes into the eyes, how, how the glasses are going to work for the patient if they're nearsighted or farsighted, if there's astigmatism, mm-hmm. if we prescribe like progressives, uh, is there going to be some aberrations with the lens? Um, so we have to know those things and be able to offset that. So um, the class that I think that I probably would have taken when I was in school was like business classes mm-hmm. uh, because optometry is a business, especially if you go into more private setting. It's like, it's a functional business. Uh, Mm -hmm. But we do in school have practice management courses, but I think I probably would have went a little step further and probably have taken more business courses, uh, especially with me being in a private practice setting. And one day if I do venture out into my own practice, I'm going to be a little more comfortable and confident. So that's definitely a question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What part-time jobs or apprenticeships or internships um, or any extracurricular activities would have best prepared you for this occupation? Well, I think I was pretty active when I was in optometry school um, as far as like different clubs and organizations. Um, But third year and fourth year probably hit home to have, um, I think the most 
uh, preparing me for what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. uh, during those years, you do internships and externships, your fourth year, and, and you're really essentially um, ex exposed to optometry full time. You know, mm -hmm. what you're going to be doing in the day in the life of optometry, um, how you're going to be treating patients, what tests you need to do. And again, like I mentioned before, we learned previously those two years, the didactic education in our third and fourth year, we kind of learn how to put it all together. Residency right. is an extension of that as well, where we kind of learn how to, you know, okay, put more of it together and take it a little step further. And, um, but I think those years are important. I do recommend rec residency too, uh, because again, I think that first year out of school, you don't feel mm -hmm. as confident. You kind of second guess a lot of things uh, that you may do in residency, kind of give you that, that layer like, okay, hey, you got it. You know what you're doing. It kind of give you that extra push that you need. And now I'm like super confident, um, you know, still learning thing because optometry is very dynamic, but it kind of mm -hmm. keeps me on top of everything that I'm learning and what to look for. Um, another thing is uh, participating in outreach programs and vision screenings, especially in different communities. It teaches you how to um, kind of work in understand uh, maybe like Latina communities or African American communities, Asian communities, uh, mm -hmm. and it kind of diversifies our profession, you know, so we are exposed to those uh, communities and we know how to interact, what, what conditions are more prevalent, um, how can we better treat, um, you know, patients of uh, different uh, ethnic backgrounds, but also right. patients with potentially like learning disabilities or special disabilities or autism, you know, so I think just dove and into those things and doing outreach programs are very, very important. Uh, research, if you have the opportunity, is also good um, to participate in. Um, my first year, I participated as a principal, uh, one of the principal investigators for the CLAY uh, research study, which is contact lens assessment in youth, uh, which was a pretty popular study uh, when I was in school. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, I was doing that my first year and I didn't know nothing about contact lenses. I was like, oh, I'm here to talk about contacts and I haven't even had the class yet. But it also just give you that option to, you know, just see what area of optometry you want to, you want to get involved in. So exposure, exposure to all the areas of optometry, I, I recommend, um, just so you can see what area you want to be in. Yeah. Right. Um, just to ask you a little bit about your association now, um, mm -hmm. what are some of the benefits of being a member of ASCO? Um, also, well, the job that I'm at right now, Shaston Eye Care, because I, I kind of work between two offices. Uh, you see job opportunities. So being in Louisiana, we don't have an optometry school. Uh, and I went to school all the way in Oregon. So I was at Pacific. Wow. University. So I was like, okay, guys, I'm heading down to the south. I don't know what's going on down there. So it kind of keeps me in a loop of all those things that's going on mm -hmm. within your network and within your area that you're interested in practicing in. Also, right. uh, network opportunities. You know, if you're looking for previous residents, um, if you're looking for uh, maybe like faculty at a different school that's doing research and you want to kind of invest, you know, and in, or kind of participate in that uh, if possible. So I think it opens the lines for communication um, across the, the spectrum. Uh, like you could probably talk to, like I say, um, me being from New Orleans, Louisiana, and going all the way to Oregon, it kind of was that, that stream of, of communication uh, to kind of communicate down there. And I I was very confident. It definitely helped me out. So I got a job. So I think that helped. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, you just basically told me about the networking opportunities, but what are some other educational opportunities that is offered by ASCO? Um, I remember when I was applying to optometry school, it had some awesome PowerPoints and videos that talked about like the profession uh, to, you know, I guess, what is optometry, what the schools offer, what were the curriculum, what I needed to do. Um, and I thought that was pretty helpful. But also at like some of our state conferences, not state conferences, national conference meetings and such, uh, they offer like educational opportunities there, uh, which I think is very, very helpful. Because again, um, like I said, optometry is very dynamic. We're always changing. And I think ASCO stays on top of that. So yeah, it kind of keeps up with the time changes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you find most surprising about your career? Well, um, now practicing full time 
from like the student aspect and now being a full-fledged optometrist is that I remember in school I professors used to always say you're more than just an optometrist and at the time I was like okay yeah duh but I didn't realize what they <laughs> meant by that but what they mean is you know when patients come in it's more than just looking at the eyes you know it's, it's making that connection well, hey, Mrs. Jones, how's your diabetes going? You know, uh, you, you know, I see, I don't see any retinopathy, but you're, you, you know, you haven't been to your doctor either. So how's that visit going? Or, you know, hey, Mrs. Jones, I heard your husband passed away. Is there anything we can do for you? You know, let me give you a hug, you know? So you become more of like, a, you have to put on different hats, you know? And I didn't realize I was going to be hat switching so much. So when you walk <laughs> in the room, you're like, oh, Lord, what hat do I, oh, my gosh, I lost my hat. I'm like, what? <laughs> Um, but also, I think that's one of the joys of being an optometrist as well, because I'm able to connect with my patients. And I think a lot of patients really feel that connection. And, um, and we're able to, you know, kind of bond in that sense that they know that it's not just about eyes that I'm caring about, but I, I care all about their, their, their well-being. You know, how are you doing today? You know, how can I make your day better? You know, if you have a yeah. problem, let's figure it out together. So um, I think you become a psychologist. You become a doctor, you become a mom, you become this, you're like, oh, okay, I'm just wearing this <laughs> hat, just got a multi-color hat or something, but it's, I think that was the most surprising, but also rewarding thing about optometry. Yeah, that's a good one, that's, yeah, I think a lot of health professions end up being that way, that you end up having to wear a lot of different hats. Mm -hmm. I had one patient one time, came in and uh well this is actually a couple of patients one patient came in and i think she thought i was a dentist i was like well mrs joe you're at the wrong appointment i don't think I'm. Yeah. Gonna do that. <laughs> she was like, well, i think you wrong you wore the wrong hat today that's not the dentist but we can check your eyes and make sure everything's good that's but, funny <laughs> yeah, we get that all the time it's like well got your days mixed up but that's not right while well, you're here <laughs> 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 um, is there anything else you would like to add to help someone considering your occupation? Yeah, I think that um, I am a mother of four, so I have four mm -hmm. kiddos. Um, I'm also a full-time PhD student in ed leadership, so I'm studying educational leadership, mm -hmm. and optometry is one of those professions that's very, very flexible, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, and again, it just kind of depends on what mode of optometry you're interested in going into right. uh, in private practice i think it it might sound busy but it allows me so much time to spend with my kids it allows me time to to do school again which i think is crazy you know but i'm doing it you know uh, <laughs> just to enjoy life you know i think it's one yeah. of those professions where you know we do care about the well-being and the ocular health of our patients but it allows us to also have our own individual lives and just to grow. Um, but also another thing that optometry does, it keeps you on your toes because we, we learn so much in school, but literally like years later, things change, you know? So it's important to just stay on top of everything, do research. I think we've become at the end of school, good researchers you know so we may not be doing research papers but we all kind of focus on that evidence-based optometry where you're just constantly learning you don't realize right. that you're constantly learning you're like man i thought i was done with all this boards or studying mm -hmm. but no you're just constantly growing and mm -hmm. i like that growth change i like the flexibility of the profession it just keeps you on your toes so it makes you want to come back and learn more <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome well thank you so much for letting me interview you today. Thank you. Thank you. I had a great time. I hope you have a great day. Oh, same to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Bye. Okay.